Right, so today we got us an old GMC, I believe it's an 88, 7000, with a massive 8.2 liter Detroit oil burning something or another. It ain't a powerhouse, so I don't know what we want to call it. Uh, truck's in for a crank, no start. Died while running, now it cranks and will not start. Um, look at that. Live run and tested by Steve. Yeah, Steve messed up because it doesn't run. So all we're doing here is we're doing an initial inspection here. Seeing if anything jumps out at us. That's nice. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, we don't need that coolant temperature sensor, right? Alright, so we got some... Uh, I'll take you over to the other side, but we got some linkage here on the governor that's fully off that's on so we do have full movement you can actually see off run all right bring it around here yeah yeah that was sitting on the tire when I opened the hood up that should be interesting so we got our linkages here. I mean, that's kind of sort of all right. It's a little loosey goosey there. And fuel shutoff solenoid harness. If I can get you guys in there, looks more dirty than anything. But let's see what we got. Jumper cables. Now this is a quality machine right here. All right. All righty. So we got pretty good cranking cadence, at least. So, you know what, let's key that back on for right now. And custom. Lots and lots of custom. And let's see what we got going. I'll be back. All right, so uh, let me wedge myself back in here again. And I've got the fuel shutoff solenoid harness loose. So ready? So we got nice solenoid engagement there, at least the sounds of it. So we're not going to go crazy tracking that down just yet. All right, we're fully seated there. So next, we're going to be checking our fuel flow. Although. If I can, climb on up in here. Eh, ain't terrible. Ain't terrible by any means, but... Nah, we're good there. Doesn't hurt to double check. Now the fun part of all this is, all the way down here, that's our fuel pump. Our fuel pump is actually run off of a coupler that's run off of this governor here. So there's that four bolt flange right down there where that paint chip went. And you got your pressure and your return lines. So, that goes all the way back into this junction block here, boom, boom, boom. So that's our next step. So, never hurts to check. I don't know if we can get you guys a good shot of that.
There is fuel in it. There's some cruddies down at the bottom of the tank, but and the cap's a little worse for the wearer, that's for sure. Come on. And then down here, we've got return line. Uh, there we are, right back there, if we can focus. Pressure line, and these lines are, I mean, they're dry rotten. They're gonna be issues in the future, but I don't think enough right now to be concerned with. We do have a newer fuel filter. And then we got our hard line right behind there. So, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna crack our pressure line and see what we got coming through. All right, unfortunately, uh, I had to do this and couldn't record it, but basically what we did was, first things first, cracked the two lines here, had some fuel coming up here. This is our tank pickup up into our fuel pump here. Cracked our return, had some fuel coming through there, and so we went down, let me come in from the backside, to this fitting right here. Now this fitting is the main pressure feed out from the pump, goes here, and see that little clamp bolt? That line goes down, one goes to the front of the head here, the other goes to the front of the head over there, and what they have is in this cylinder head, they got a common fuel rail, not common rail diesel like the high injection pressure stuff, but a common fuel rail <coughs> that feeds all of the injectors. So how that works out is each one of these injectors has its own rocker arm that fires it. Boom, 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 boom. So you get your common fuel feed through. You got the injector rocker arm that actually pressurizes and fires the fuel. So uh, spec on these is 65 to 75 PSI out of the pump. I don't have anything to adapt to that style fitting for my fuel pressure test set. So we had pretty good stream coming out of there when it was cranking over. Uh, we've got decent return fuel flow. So the next trick here is we're going to be taking a look at this governor mechanism and seeing if we're getting full rack control of the fuel injectors. If this is, say, sticking closed a little bit when it goes to start or jamming up, uh, we won't get rack movement on the injector, which means the injectors, it's a, a little barrel basically. That won't rotate and allow fuel in to get pressurized and fire off. So let's see if I can come up with something here and we'll be back. All right, so what I think we're gonna do here is we're gonna pin this open just a little bit, maybe right about there, keep it open. Not too much, just a little bit to hold it there. And what we're also gonna do is we're gonna uh, get a little creative here. So each one of these heads, remember I was telling you guys about the rail, well, each one of these heads has an outlet at the back of the rail, which goes to a line, line here, into here. This comes up from the back side of the head into this junction port, and bolts right into there. But basically, these are relief valves, for lack of a better term. It's actually a restriction valve that allows fuel pressure to build up in the rail. And so if those start to bypass, say, instead of holding the 65 to 75 PSI in the rail, uh, it, it's popping off at 30. It's gonna bypass all that excess fuel from here and here all the way back to tank. So there's two ways to do this. One is to open it up and measure the fuel return flow in a bucket, which we may have to do. The other quick way is to take this line, the return line there, and we're just going to crimp it shut, and basically it serves a two-part thing. One, it saves me getting a bucket out, but more importantly, if those valves are going bad, 
or one of them's bad. Now I got a restriction here. Now I can theoretically build up pressure in that rail as well as forcing any potential air bound or any of the air bound up in the fuel system, forcing that out of the injector tips and hopefully getting this running. So we got the Chevy charging the Chevy here. It is what it is. Climb on back in here. Now here's a here's a good note. If engine does not start, check crane emergency stop switches on control console. So, even though I didn't do that on video yet, I did give it a quick check. Um, generally, they will disengage the fuel shutoff solenoid, which we already heard clicking over. Basically, you got your crane here, crane controls, stabilizers front and rear, control valves here, all your regular ones, and then your emergency stop switch here. I don't know if you guys can read that, but that goes on. And same on that side. So, just a potential variable when you start dealing with stuff like this, just to let you guys know. So back up in here. see what happens all right so let's shut that two off I'm gonna pull this governor come on there we are governor assembly and kind of slide that not so prettily out of the way so this is the internal of our governor mechanism basically we have our control rods come on now Get that up out of the way a bit. Control rod here goes through this little tube for the one side, and then the fuel rack control. This is our stop, but right underneath here, can't get a good angle, but it pushes or pulls accordingly. Little duker duker spring. Actually, for some reason, I seem to think that may not be 100% right on that, but anyway, we've got our throttle here, moves the plates accordingly, and then we have our fuel shutoff solenoid, which acts on this plunger here, and we have our mechanical on-off switch. So, we'll be right back here. We're gonna hit, actually, you know what? I'm real careful, like. I think. I think I can get you guys set up here to watch this. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Just watch the little spring right there when we key on. And we do have good movement there. So next to confirm proper movement of these rods and all. Alright, so we got to adjust it. We went from off to on, made sure that was good. 
check the rack movement. We got two bolts in here for right now, just to test it. Um, let's see what we got here. Just let's take this off. We already eliminated that as a problem. Yeah. dog pecker nets everywhere here so hopefully we can get this done pretty soon uh, wood chips and climbing up and down and up and down I'm gonna need my hard hat by the end of today depress clutch wait to start yes Listen to that Detroit power. All right. And let's carefully climb on up here. These taking off a while. Woo. Chevy don't let me down. Except when it does. Alrighty, I'm gonna let this run a little bit, try some things. Let her clear out somewhat and burn off some of the fuel and all. Probably run the crane a little bit, and then we'll be back so I can explain to you what was going on the best I can all right so we'll try to walk through this real quick uh, I probably didn't explain it real good but basically thought process was crank the truck over confirm the fault cranked over good no smoke no fuel uh, pinched off the return line for pressure reasons to see if the regulating valves in back were bad that didn't help uh, confirm we did have some type of fuel pressure coming into the pump assembly which comes right here, runs off of the governor assembly, which is gear driven from the front of the engine. That goes off of the timing gears and all, and feeds the pump. So we also confirmed that that coupler was good between the pump and the, uh, the governor shaft assembly there. So we knocked all that out. We basically got down to, we got fuel going in, we got fuel coming out, which left us to the only thing that controls the fuel uh, our fuel shutoff solenoid that goes into the side here or the governor rack assembly itself. So let's scroll down to, I think we got a better picture here. So the thing is, I don't know the whole story behind the truck other than it stopped running and they changed both fuel filters. Uh, there were some cruds in the tank. So highly likely the fuel filters just clogged up but somebody was in monkeying around with this governor assembly. And let's see if we can get a better aerial view here. So what I believe was happening was that cover had to have been off because that was all, I'll say, fairly fresh silicone. That should be a gasket on here from the factory that was silicone. And all the bolts still had it on, whatever. So when you take that top cover off at the fuel shutoff solenoid that we looked at when you go to reassemble and put that back on one the rod for the throttle linkage needs to fit right in here not backwards or forwards of it because that's going to change our fuel rack movement so I'll scroll up again here scroll up so this rod right here needs to go into that groove and this stop lever which is that single shaft with no uh, knob on it. That's for a manual shut off. So I think that was jammed up in it as well. Basically right in this section here where it should not have been. So fuel shut off solenoid acts on this, moves that, and then it moves these two rods. Now how these rods work is right there. 
they're actuated, then they move the fuel rack for each head. So we were not getting movement of these rods, which you can take the little rubber boot off that we had looked at to do it. But if you go to reassemble this and you don't have the fuel shutoff solenoid retracted, meaning power applied, um, what you'll actually do is one of two things. One, you'll get this all jammed up depending on how you have the throttle arm sitting on either side of this. But if that shutoff solenoid is extended, you can actually end up locking the rack in full fuel position and not be able to shut it off. So you risk a runaway condition. So what you got to do is when you put that back together, because I don't think I touched on it, you key on, have that solenoid retract, line up that throttle arm, stick it right in the groove here, drop everything in, make sure it sits nice, it should sit flush, and then put your screws back in, which is all we did. Got it up and running. Like I said, um, I test drove it and I, I played around with it and the thing was good. So best I can figure somebody was in here monkeying around because the governor does not just stop working on its own and have no failed parts in it. So I think they started out with a simple clogged fuel filter hard priming issue and it escalated after lots of parts were played with and lines left loose and whatnot to this being reassembled incorrectly and that's why it would not start so hopefully that guy you guys enjoyed that hopefully it's helpful to somebody and have a good one